the state of Texas, I don't know that there's a bigger football name in the last 20, 30 years than Ricky Williams. One of my favorites all the time. So thank you. Thank you so much. When I won the Heisman Trophy, like I had so many doors open to me, but because all, because I made valuable the next logical step, I didn't look at okay, what else would I really like to do? And I think if football players would just ask that question, it doesn't mean they wouldn't play football, but they wouldn't have to exclude the other parts of themselves and commit to football. They can stay committed to themselves. When you're in that machine of the NFL, it takes a lot of courage to be different. He just did it. It takes a lot for a Heisman Trophy winner like he was, a successful pro like he was, to come to a university like in Common Word and to kind of have a new beginning as a coach. He really related well to the mission of the university, to the students that we have here, and um, so it was a great match. As you go through life, for me at least, I'm always asking for clarity, I'm always asking for more information, I'm always asking for more, and so more shows up. And one of the ways that more shows up is you let go of your fantasy of how you think things should be. When I've had a sense of where I wanted to go with my life, then things just started showing up to, f to facilitate the change I was looking for. Inhale, reaching up. Most of what we really want, it's not about finding it, it's about creating it. Somebody said, well, what are you gonna be able to show them that other people don't. He said, how to be great. He was great. He's helped change the culture. We've never had any kind of swagger here, ever. For the University of Incarnate Word, this is a huge, huge deal. Oh, God! So I had to call my dad and everything. He was like, do we have Ricky? I was like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's still backs crossed. Yeah. What was the first so, comment or question you got from your friend? When do we get to smoke with them? <laughs> I'm from California, so that was the main topic. And it, it kind of felt to me like they were kind of like dogging him. He's a weed addict, he smoked more pot than a reggae yeah. band. And, yeah. I know during that time I was smoking more than he was. And I, I, I thought it was funny that, that he was perceived that way, you know? Who gives a damn what happened 10 years ago, really? I mean, come on. To be successful coach at the Division I level is you have to be intelligent, you have to be passionate, you have to be a leader. Does he have those qualities? Yes. My teachers would, and my mom would always say, you can do or be anything you want if you just put your mind to it. And when they said it, I could sense that that's true. But at the same time, I looked around and I didn't see anyone actually doing it. And so for me, what Access Consciousness has been, it's this wealth of information and a way to look at things that for me up to this point makes so much more sense than anything that has before. And I think that's really what life is, is that as you ask for more, the universe or God or whatever you want to call it starts to deliver what you're asking for. I'll go to something, I'll suck every drop of awareness or information I can out of it and then when I'm done, I'm like, okay, what's next? I don't really view these guys, these kids, as football players. I view them as people. You didn't see what they did? Right, they see, they ran right out there right away. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, that sucks. That's fucked up, huh? Nuts. Are you going to be all right? I'm going to be fine. It pisses me off. <laughs> it's not about fitting me into the job of coaching. It's about looking at what I bring to the table as a coach, which is different. If he wants to incorporate yoga into this, he, we can do it. And so he can use all that stuff he's learned to help educate young people who need a lot of education. He runs with our guys and have to practice. And Does he win? Up. He can't beat Broderick, but he can beat most of the rest of them. <laughs> Had his cleats on and, and shorts and everything, and I'm like, yeah, man. He's still strong and fast, regardless of if he's playing football or not. Can he beat you guys in the 40? Not me. <laughs> the slowest, the slowest person, person on the team. The coaching stuff is, to me is, is really secondary, but these kids are going to be here four or five years, and it, you know, it's a lot of, it's a time where you probably experience most change in your life. Rough day today, huh? Yeah, yeah shake it off. Come back tomorrow, right? And to have someone yelling at you or being hard on you or making your life more difficult, it just doesn't help. All right, good work today. Don't worry about it, okay? All right, all right break us down. Come on, Max on three. One, two, three, Max. The way I look at it, any kid that has a chance to be coached by me and doesn't see that it would be like the coolest thing in the world is 
crazy. You really find out, you know, who a coach is in the film room because that's when it really shows that if the coach cares about you and cares about the team is how well he works with you on correcting what you did wrong and, and telling you what you did right. One day I'm gonna build a football field on a quiz. To me, I coach them how I would have liked to have been coached. He's like an older brother to me. I know I can go talk to him about, about anything. Hey coach, you got a graphic calculator? Yeah, I got one, you need one? <laughs> Are you good at math? I'm, I'm pretty good at math, yeah. Is that where you got a test on Monday? Yeah, I got a big test. All right, so on Sunday we'll study. Okay. All right. Have a well, season three. I know you some more. You don't want to wrestle me. Yes, I do. Right. All right. Some yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Can you help me write a paper? When is this going to happen? I don't know. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Yeah, I'll write a paper. What's it do? All right. Well, I ain't going to write it next week, right? All right. So I know you're good with that stuff. I'm all right. <laughs> About three quarters of former players are, are broken, divorced within four years out of being out of the league. What do you think about the transition process? Well, I think they wait until they retire before they start the transition process. And for me, I started the transition process back in 2004 when I retired the first time. One of the reasons why I retired is because I was starting to realize that there's a lot of parts of my personality that are really off. You know, because I know that I've been a football player for so long and I know this isn't it, so there must be something more out there. It's when you get all this money, the players buy that they have to be committed to the NFL. But really, what got them there was being committed to themselves. From what I saw in the media, I looked like I thought like he hated football, but he's a student of the game. He knows so much about football, and he has so much conviction towards football. Come on, go. There you go, John. There you go, there you go John. Break that tackle, John. John. Stop that boy. You could classify football as a spiritual practice if you if you approach it that way. And I think, unfortunately, people, they, they chase these dreams of being a professional athlete, and they miss that they already have been trained to be successful in anything that they, they want to be. What haven't you done that you want to do? I haven't been the head coach here yet. I mean, I definitely have already decided I'm not going anywhere else. Go!